Hey everybody, welcome to the Linux Cast uh, for October 11th, 2020. Um, now the last few episodes, I've been here just all by myself. It's been very lonely, but I have a co-host. His name is Martin. Hi Martin, how are you doing? Hi Matt, well, well, doing good, as well as could be a magic did these days. There we go. <laughs> yeah, Alright, so this is our first show together. We're, uh, we, and we've talked for about an hour on Skype last Sunday. We're so probably what you'll notice is we'll t- it'll take a little while for us to get our groove on and, and become aware of each other's sense of humor because I have a terrible sense of humor. I probably will make fun of you know weird things at some certain times, and I also swear. And we're gonna at Martin's request, we're gonna try not to swear. So if you hear me swear, I'll I'll finally get to learn how to do that fancy beeping thing as they do on the radio. It'll be fun. <laughs> uh, if you want to get in contact with us, you can do so. Contact info is uh, Linux at the Linuxcast on Twitter. You can follow me. I'm at MTWB on Twitter. Martin is Martin Twit to you. To you, you need a better handle, my friend. <laughs> oh, that was years ago when I put that. I just thought, his, Martin his, Twit his, to you. That'll do. Yeah, his Twitter handle will be in the uh, show notes. So it'll be easier just to click on it. Martin Twit, the number two you on Twitter. Uh, you can also email us at the Linuxcast at gmail.com, which I do check once a year. <laughs> and you can also like <laughs> us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Linuxcast or subscribe on YouTube and all of our uh, podcast feeds and stuff at the Linuxcast.org. You can follow the, find the link for the YouTube channel also in the show notes. <sighs> and the Eagles lost. Well... That's just it. Pack it in, folks. My football team lost. Blows. <laughs> all right. So last time I was here all by myself, I said we're going to talk about NVIDIA Norm. We pushed that back a week, and this time we're just going to let Martin introduce himself just a little bit. So, Martin, why don't you tell us about yourself? How, what, why do you use Linux? What Linux do you use? And so on. H- have a ramble. Yeah, well, I'll try to keep, uh, keep it short. <laughs> right. So, I mean... I started my journey with home computers back in the mid 80s. I was using a VIC 20, then onto a Commodore 64, and then progressed onto the Atari ST, and then down the console route with a Mega Drive and SNES or SNES, PS1, and so forward. Um, I took computer studies back in 1993. Having never actually used a real PC, unfortunately. Um, this was back in the days, obviously, of using the DOS prompt. Um, no fancy spreadsheets. It was Lotus 1, 2, 3, WordPerfect. And I was uh, programming using the Pascal programming language, language even. Um, ever since my computer studies, I've, I've also always owned a PC. I've just loved the tinkering about and the various... Um, formations and bits and pieces you can get um, running on PCs. Um, With my Linux journey, I mean, I tried it back in probably about 2010. I didn't get on with it, whether it was because it was a low-spec system. I I think generally it was just what I was not used to. Uh, It seemed very sluggish. Um, I mean, I've tried it every so often, uh, but it was the gaming and the familiarity which kept me toyed into the Microsoft Windows ecosystem. Um, I'll skip forward a few years, back to March of this year. Um, I decided to upgrade my PC as I was working from home, as a lot of us are, and still are. Um, I replaced the motherboard, memory, graphics card, and I was quite amazed it actually booted straight into Windows. Unfortunately, bottom right hand of the screen, I had the dreaded Windows not genuine. Um, I did a bit of Google Foo and found out that Microsoft created a special number from my motherboard CPU on hard drive um, that, that ties into a specific key and my um, login to Windows. Um, I just wasn't too happy at that and obviously I tried to get rid of it and this and that. And I mean, to be fair, it was only a £5 key off eBay. Um so I looked into more to try and get rid of it. I've eventually got rid of it and then just found out the amount of te- telemetry they send off to Microsoft, um, the constant software updates that often lead to a crash or, or even worse, data loss. So I thought, right, let's give Linux a go. Uh, so I watched a few YouTube videos um, and decided upon trying MX Linux um, on my 2010 Samsung laptop. 
Um, I was quite surprised how easy the install was and literally bought my laptop back from the grave as it has struggled recently under Windows. Um, and I was just amazed at the amount of choice that Linux gave me, whether it was Conkey, Plank, um, all, the, all the different system information I could get up on the screen without eating away at my resources, um, the varied different desktops that you can get lost in. Um, and a plus was my Steam library had slightly increased from the previous times I've um, tried Linux in the past. Um, I've not gotten rid of Linux yet from my, my, my main rig. Um, I still have to use Windows now and again for the odd um, program that is not available yet on Linux. Um, so I just dual boot it. Uh, currently, I'm on Linux Mint with a KDE Plasma, which I'm trying out, which I quite like, um, and not as resource hungry as I did think. And that's about it up until this point. Mm, very good. Um, I used to like KDE too, and then I discovered Windows Managers, and I've never looked back. <laughs> okay. I think that's a, a rabbit hole long on my well delve into. <laughs> so I have KDE on this. Uh... On this machine here, and the other day I w went into it for some reason. I don't remember what I was doing. Oh, I messed up my i3 config and couldn't get i3 to to load. And when I got, finally got back into i3, Kwin was running in the background, taking up like 60% of my memory, which is really weird. So, anyways, yeah. pers personal like Linux experiences aside. So, uh, welcome Martin to li the Linux Cast. Um, Excellent, great to be here. We're gonna have a lot of fun, I think, o over the you know yep. over time. Um, so instead of a main topic, so the way we're, we've decided to rejigger the way we structure the the podcast now that there's two people here instead of just me rambling on into the ether, uh, we're going to have uh, a couple links for news and then we'll do one main big topic like I had been doing, but, you know, with two people. Um, today, what we're going to do instead of the news, we're just going to talk about the favorite Linux apps that we use. And I figured, Martin, that we'll just go through and you do one, I'll do one, you know, until we get, you know, until we get to a certain amount of time, and then we'll just wrap it up. So why don't you uh, yeah. give uh, your first top Linux app? Yeah, well, uh, coming from Windows, um, I was constantly either running system optimization or C cleaner. Um, obviously, you don't have to run as many on uh, Linux, um, but a nice little system cleaner optimizer I did come across was the one called Stasa. Um, we'll drop the link in the show notes so you can find it from your um, software repository. But it, it tidies things up. There's no danger of uh, bricking your system or anything like that. But it it, it really is a good one. It just feel quite comfortable with it. Obviously, there's there's better ones. There's Bleach Bit. Um, there's, there's, couple of others uh, but i think bleach bit if you're new and you tick the wrong thing you, you could well be in a bit of danger so i would recommend stay so it's just a couple of clicks cleans your system mm, sounds cool um i don't clean my system often enough <laughs> it's probably probably <laughs> something i should do i probably have all these orphaned packages just sitting around mm. um yep so my first one is a new one that i just actually did a video on for the YouTube channel. It's called Zim or oh. ZimWiki. Um, it's a it's a VimWiki alternative, but it's a like a GUI based notes based notes taking app um, that you oh, can yeah. use mark Markdown and allows you to create links and child links and all sorts of things. It's just a really great note taking app. Now it, it doesn't offer syncing services across devices or anything, so it's just basically for your computer, but I really like it. It's also helped me with, like, outlining, like, uh, you know, I'm a fan fiction writer, so I write fan fiction and original fiction and stuff like that, so it's helped me with doing outlines and stuff like that. It's really cool. Um, also free and open source, so. Uh, oh, cool. I, I did have, have a mess about with a Kodi MD. Is that something si similar? Is that like a Markdown, just a mar regular Markdown? Yeah, editor? Markdown, yeah. Yeah, this... Yeah. this in. Zim has Markdown in it, but it's more used to create, like, your own personal wiki. Basically, it allows you to go through and, like, um, each page links to each other, kind of like on Wikipedia or whatever. But it's for your own personal notes and allows you to organize uh, into different categories and tags and stuff like that. So it's a full-blown thing that just uses Markdown. 
Oh, cool. Can you tie that to your Android or whatever device of choice yet? Or No, they don't have an, nothing mobile. They There was talk in 2017 about them being able to – about them doing an Android app, but it never – got off the ground but it just saves everything in a .txt file so there's no reason why you couldn't save that into dropbox or something and have like a mm, yeah you know a text editor on your your phone just do it and, and if that text editor happened to support markdown it would all come through formatted just like it does in zim anyways so um, yeah i haven't tried that but i'm assuming that it would work that way because they're just that there, there's no special formatting uh extension or anything it's just dot txt files it's not like in vimwiki i don't know if, if you use vimwiki vimwiki has no it no. saves all those in a dot wiki file so it have you'd have a harder time taking that and putting it somewhere else than you would just the text files of zim that's why i kind of like zim uh, all right your next all app right. oh next app um, um well i've been getting actually into um web apps um which is um, available for uh, Linux Mint on a beta. Um, it, people coming from Peppermint OS would have known it as the ICE app, and this lets users turn their favourite websites um, into standalone op- applications in a containerized browser, which is ideal for banking. Um, to be fair, I just I've got my banking, I've got my login for work on there, I've got YouTube on there, so it just opens up without all your various tracking. So it's just a standalone, um, basically, a container package mm-hmm. with uh, no tracking involved. And I'm, I'm getting quite uh, interested in that, uh, just locking down the, the security a bit, saved, uh, ch- tracking me all the way through various websites if I'm looking for bits and pieces. But that, that's my um, second app, definitely. Yeah, that sounds that sounds interesting. I don't I don't know if there's any web apps that I would use for that though, because I try to stay away from web apps. There used to when yeah. I, you know, there used to be this one called like Frank or something that allowed you to integrate all of the messaging web apps like uh, Facebook Messenger and things like that. So maybe I could use that for like that because I don't remember what that one other one was. All right, so my next app is i3, which is a window manager. Um, it's what I use instead of like a Plasma or whatever, uh, regular desktop environment. I, uh, I've i been messing around with other window managers, but I just always keep coming back to i3. And I think it's because you don't have to learn any like programming language in order to do it. Like So I was using Qtile for a while, and that you have to use um, Python you know, in order to do the config file. And like, I don't know any Python at all. Um, and while it's nice to learn, it's just kind of a pain in the butt if you, you, uh, hey, look, I didn't swear. Good job, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's just, it's just a pain. You go in there and you forget a comma and you're like, oh man, like and all of a sudden your thing won't load. So I3 is not like that. It also has like a, if you make an error, it still loads for the most part, except for that one time where it didn't load. Um, anyways, I, that's just, it's the thing that I, I, when, when I first started out with Linux and Windows and everything, I used my mouse for everything, like, just like everybody does. And now that I've switched to window managers, everything is just keyboard driven. I mean, it's just so much easier. I hardly ever use my mouse. Um, so that's the reason why I like i3. Um, so. I must admit, I've, um, dabbled with the open box. Yeah, that's a floating tile, tile, floating window manager, which um, I haven't tried all that much. But from the the Unix porn uh, subreddit, there's a lot, lot you can do with it. It looks fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's definitely um, drain your system if you're using a, a pre-2010 laptop, def- definitely. Especially if you get the right distro working on it. Um, at the end of the day, personally, I'll just use... Um, Linux uh, to log on to server at work and YouTube and all the various. There's nothing uh, particularly demanding that I do use a system for. Um, mindy tinkering about. <laughs> yeah, that's basically what I do. Most most of my work is done in uh, like LibreOffice is where I spend most of my time because I'm a writer, so that's what I do. <laughs> um, yeah, that's basically Microsoft my, Office. That, that that's my main thing about Linux. Um, I, I like using. Um, my Microsoft um, proprietary software like um, get your spreadsheets, forks and pitchforks. Yeah, torches and pitchforks. Yeah, I'm, 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I could log on to the web apps and things like that, but I, I'm used to Excel. Uh, but it, it's no biggie. If I need to log, I can log into the web page from here, and it just opens up just as good. So, and and I don't think Microsoft's going to give that up. They might give us uh, Microsoft Edge. Not that I don't think a lot of people's um, too bothered about that. But that's another topic, I'm guessing. Yeah. Um, all right, so your next app. Another app. Um, bear with me. Let me just have a look through what I've recently... Um, can I cheat and say Audacity? Sure, go ahead. <laughs> I don't have it on my list, so go ahead. <laughs> that's a new one I've uh, used today, really. Uh, just before the show, just ran through a couple of bits and pieces. Um I've heard a lot of it from the podcasting world, a lot of people. Um, is it available on Windows also? Yeah, it's on Windows and Mac, yep. Yeah, right. I, I hear a lot of good things for it. Um, so I've decided to run that. Um, but yeah, it seems nice and clean. It, it's not a busy system, um, user-friendly. Um, so I'll have to cheat and use that if I can. <laughs> yeah, all that... I use Audacity all the time. It's it's fantastic. Um, the it the the primary user interface kind of re- looks like it's from the Windows ninety eight era, but if you can theme it, it looks good. Um, so my next one is uh, another keyboard driven one. It's called Brophy. It's basically a launcher. Uh, it's an alternative to D menu, which is what most window tiling ma- tiling window managers use. Um, but I like it because there's I mean there's so many different ways you can use it. So I got it set up so I can hit control or super C and that brings up uh, a whole bunch of everything that I've copied and pasted, a whole history of copy and paste stuff, the clipboard. Yeah. Um, yeah. I could do windows B and it brings up all of the emojis on my system. I can hit one and then it goes to the clipboard and I can use it. So that's really cool. So you don't have to go through and search. Like if you're on Facebook, Facebook has a whole bunch of these emojis in their little thing, but you can't search them. Um, you know, I, I'm, 35 years old and I still use emojis. Judge me if you will. Um, but that's basically, basically Rofi and you can just use it to launch apps and stuff and it's just a keyboard driven way of launching apps. Um, now there's uh, other versions of this. There's one called uh, so like Mac has Alfred but Windows has Al- or Linux has Albert. So um, that's a more GUI centric version because this is just like a brings up like a little terminal launcher. So that's my next app. I really like it. Uh, you got another Excellent. one for us, Martin? Uh, yeah, I think uh, a staple for anyone um, should be Redshift, which um, changes the, your monitor toning depending on the um, time of day. So it'll obviously reduce, um, I think, it, is it the blue? Yeah, blue uh, light, later yeah. on at night, it, it'll um, drop your temperatures in your monitor because in a couple of times I've been on until the wee small hours and it just fries your eyes but red shifts a, a really good thing and obviously with the dimming out the blue light it, it does help you to go to sleep and obviously you're not you're not getting the flickering that sometimes you have from the refresh rate of the monitors but yeah definitely red shift should be a um installed on anyone's setup yeah i think that's one of those things where um that's something that i should be using but i don't use I'm young. I'm invincible. I don't have to do these things. Oh, <laughs> probably, no, probably no, no. My, who needs? You got you got two eyes. You don't. I mean, you have one to lose. <laughs> That's horrible. All right. Um, <laughs> so you told you bad sense of humor. So you're just gonna have to deal with it. Uh, so my next one is uh, NC Spot. It's a terminal-based Spotify client. Um, so when I switched to Window Manager, Window Managers, I basically tried to make it so that everything is as minimal as possible so I don't have a ton of overhead. Um, and the Spotify client itself for Linux is an Electron app. And Electron apps take a ton of system resources. So uh, NC Spot just basically, you install it, you sign in with your Spotify account, and everything's keyboard driven, and it just works, and it's hardly any overhead at all. I mean, it doesn't take up hardly any system resources and it's it there's just something there's just something about using a uh, 
application in a terminal makes you feel like you're a nerd, and I like feeling like a nerd, so um, that's the reason why I use <laughs> NC Spot, which is uh, probably not a good reason, but it's it's good. Um, there's certain I mean, it doesn't have all the functionality that the Spotify client has, but you, I mean you can still manage your playlists and search for artists and stuff. You, the only thing I wish it had was uh, the ability to start like a a radio station based on an artist or a song or something, which you can't do from the terminal, which is disappointing. Uh, right. Yeah, so your next one, Martin. Um, I'll go for uh, Steam on Linux, um, mainly because I do like the odd game. Um, and it's just not – well, it's exactly the same as on Windows, obviously, with slightly less games. I mean, I did go down the rabbit hole of um, – Lutris um, and wine, uh, but sometimes you could you could just end up scratching your head, and then I mean you'll look it up and you'll you'll find out exactly what you've done. But it, it's a lot of hard work. I just rather write it's in my Steam library, just download it, play it native. Um, obviously, I've gone to uh, use Proton and things like that, but yeah, I'll, I'll go for Steam. It's a good choice. I don't play as many games as i want to play um but i i will say this you're so right about wine and lutris i I, i've been using linux for three years and i've never not once been successful in getting a game to play through wine Um, (laughs) i don't know whether or not it's because it's so hard or if i'm just a moron it's either one is possible but i just cannot like i really i desperately want to be able to play hearthstone on linux because that's through like Hearthstone is the only reason why I have Windows on a partition. Uh, but I can't get Battle.net to install on Linux. I just can't do it. And there's no good tutorial out there like saying, hey, you know, you have to have these de- dependencies and these fonts installed. There's n- there's nothing like that out there. I'm not sure why you think that. I mean, I've seen people on YouTube have Battle.net installed and play Overwatch and stuff, but there's, I don't know. Uh, and rant. Anyway, so m- my next one, my next one is the only piece of proprietary software that I actually uh, use on a daily basis. I have Skype installed. We're using Skype right now, but I don't use that very often. But my one that I use every day is Todoist. It's a um, my to-do list manager. I keep my daily things that I have to do, you know, in it, and it syncs across my phone. And th- there's just no good uh, open source way to do this. Um, there's a, a, a Todoist client called Planner that's for elementary OS. It works pretty much only well in elementary OS from my experience. It doesn't work well in a window manager, which is just disappointing. But even then, it still uses the pr- proprietary backend of Todoist. Um, and I like being able to sync the tasks across phones. And you can do that with G-Tasks and, or a G-Task client, but there's no good ones. They're all meh. You know, I, I, don't, I don't know. It's just, it's just not good. And it's, it, it's weird to say your biggest dis- – if you had to list your biggest disappointment with, with Linux, mine would be the lack of a good open source to-do client. And you'd think – I mean every computer science student, their very first app that they code is a to-do client. I mean you'd think that there would be at least one good open source one, but there's just not. That's That's my – that's another rant for today. Um, so you got another another app for us, Martin? Yeah, I'll go for a, a terminal app called, well, I'll butcher this now, uh, Yakwake, Y-A-K-U-A-K-E. Um, it's just a nice little terminal app, F4, and it drops down. I mean, I, I know you can use the terminal shortcuts. Mm-hmm. Um, but I find myself opening terminal, shutting it down, right, oh, Open it up, blank new terminal. You quake it, you quakey, F4, pop, pop in your commands, paste it in. Um, it, it's it's quite customizable as well. When you lose focus, it can roll back up, um, roll back over, drops back down, or press F4, carry off where you left off. Um, I think it really is a, a a good little terminal emulator. I've used it before. That it'll. I think it has a nice feature where you can like start, say you start an update for Ubuntu or whatever, and then it can just go like run in the background. Just right? leave it running, yeah. Yeah, that that's really nice because otherwise, I mean, for everything else, you have to leave the terminal open on a screen and it's taking up real estate. That's you know that's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a couple other ones that are kind of like that too. I've tried. Um, 
Anyway, so my next one is uh, so in my quest of to try to find everything open source for my daily needs, uh, I switched from LastPass to Bitwarden. I discovered Bitwarden from through an ad on uh, DLN, uh, and uh, it's awesome. I mean, it's just fantastic. It's open source. It's every feature you want is free. They have a paid version. I'm not even sure what you get with the paid version, but I, I just throw them some money every month because it's awesome. I mean, it's just uh, it's basically like I don't know if you've used one password or last pass. It's basically that, but just open source and it's well designed. It has you know Android app, iOS app uh, to keep your passwords in. And I mean, I think everyone should use a password manager. So it's just this is the one that I've chosen and it's open source. I was using uh, NPass for a while, uh, and that's not open source, but it, it worked fairly well. Um, but Bitwar Bitwarden is just, yeah, it's it's better in every way. So that's my. Go ahead. Cool, cool, cool. cool. Um, yeah, I've heard the guys at DLN um, with it because um, I'm a LastPass guy still. Um, but I've been thinking about giving um, Bitwarden a try. Um, because there is a lot of features, and I, I think of. Just, doing this off my head have you got something like a gig of, of your notes and stuff like that you can s save on the system and things like that um as well i think you can have it closed down so it's just on your system or in the cloud um but i, th I think it's about 10 bucks for a year which I th i'm pretty sure of which which is nothing just especially with your, the security and they offer bounties to try and crack it so i don't see LastPass doing that i just hear that LastPass has never been um broken into but when i log into LastPass, it isn't one of the best it's just like you get your e, e, uh, you put your obviously your email in and you've got countless amounts of tries at your, your password and i, I just I, I don't feel safe as a password manager so maybe that's one to have a look to and obviously if it works on android as well um yeah it does yeah, that'd, nice be, that, that'd be spot on yeah, it's, it's it's very nice on Android. Um, I'm not sure if it has a, a limit of password tries. I'm not sure if it has that same volume. It seems like, I mean that seems like I mean that seems standard, right? It seems like something you you'd have to do. Like, hey, you've tried ten times, you have to try. Mm -hmm. I mean, even even, yeah. even like even like Twitter. I mean, <laughs> who cares about Twitter, right? That has a timeout password, but a password manager doesn't. That's not very odd. All right. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and get you got you. Uh, we got time for uh, one more app, so why don't you, if you have uh, another one to share with us? Right, I'll go for I'll I'll go for P Cloud. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, let me just bring it up. Yes, yeah, so a P Cloud. I just want to check how much you get on a basic. Um, Well, they, P, P Cloud gives you P Cloud gives you extra for pretty much every action you take. You, know, you fill out your profile, you get an extra gigabyte or something. You share it with somebody, you get extra gigabytes. And uh, P Cloud's great. Yeah, I, I use P Cloud a lot. Um, obviously, distro hopping, so I just log into that, um, pull down some of my f favorite terminal commands to install software or whatnot. But P Cloud's quite nice i mean i, I was going to go for next cloud as well which i've gone on to um but I've, i'll keep p cloud as like my my my, my extra backup so i've got next cloud and i've got p code uh but i'm, I'm I quite like next cloud as well especially i think i've got five gigs free and it's just like i'm guessing that they want um me to bring all my files across and go for the one terabyte or 10 terabyte but five gigs enough just for um my desktop saves and various things like that obviously it handles my email but yeah i'll go for a split between p cloud and next cloud for that for the apps just for file synchronization especially if you distro up in it and, and Let's face it, we're only keeping a couple of files on your system at any one time that's of any use, uh, just in case you um, format the wrong drive, which occasionally happens. <laughs> yeah, DD is not necessarily the easiest thing to work use. Um, no. So, 
I've looked into after we talked last week. I talked. I, I looked into a little bit of doing uh, Next Cloud, and I found a service provider. I think I'm going to use that. I don't know how to pronounce their name. It starts with an O. Uh, but you get 100 gigabytes, and it's like 25 bucks a year. Like that's that's, that's pretty nice, good. Isn't it? That's that's, yeah. that's really good. But I quite yeah. happy with the five gig. But yeah, that's good. I mean, the thing is, you you the, the prices are coming down all the time. Um, but yeah, that's a really good deal. So, I mean, you could quite easily transfer all your files across there, but uh, like they're saying, <clears throat> I'd rather have it shared out with between a couple because you don't know when some of these guys are just going to go belly up or, or you, you're just going to lose your date. So, it, it's always best having two cloud services. Mm-hmm. Um, your pictures stored on CD-ROM uh, or mail off... Um, your your USB to a family member. Just make sure you've got it in three different places, especially for like family photos and things like that. Hey, I got yeah, I got mine in several different places too. Um, yeah. All right, so I think we'll go ahead and, and wrap up there. We got about a half an hour of a of a good podcast uh, coming up next week. We're going to talk about uh, Nvidia and ARM. We're going to talk about our opinions on that. We'll also have a couple uh, news links uh, that suit our fancy um and uh i just guess i'll go ahead and go and if you want to get in contact with us we uh all of the contact information is at the beginning nobody listens to the all the way to the end anyways um <laughs> I, I mean i say that but then there's like that you know like seven people who actually do it's, it's actually 70 percent of people actually make it all the way to the end so you brave brave souls making it all the way to the end of this <laughs> nonsense i mean our heart really goes in we're so grateful for those who listen all the way in. So um, we should put it like a contest. I mean, we, if we had like unlimited money or something, we'd do a contest at the end. And the only way you, you know what the contest is is if you listened all the way to the end. But you can't skip. Cause you'd have some, j- you know, swear word <laughs> that skips <laughs> to the end, you know, <laughs> just to get the answer to the contest. All right, anyways, uh, we will be back next week. Uh, not bad for a first episode, huh, Martin? Excellent. Great talking to you, man. It's been a pleasure.